Welcome back to the shop. Today we've got two water to air intercooled superchargers sitting on the bench. On the left hand side we've got the LSA supercharger without a lid on it right now. But these were basically found in the LSA engines of 09 to 15 in the second gen CTSVs as well as the fifth gen Camaro ZL1s from 2012. Uh, both of these superchargers went on a 9 to 1 compression ratio engine and produced somewhere between 556 horsepower to 580 horsepower. So both of these superchargers have bypass valves on the LSA. It is located right there. And on the E-Force, it's located right there. Now, basically what that does is when you're driving down the road, not on boost, there is a valve at the top there. And this valve will allow you to basically open up and run this thing just straight off of atmospheric pressure. Now this will reduce any kind of load that you're having from compressing air. Another point I want to make is this E4 supercharger has the belt drive on the same plane as a factory LS1 balancer. Now if you were to go to an LSA setup you actually have to run an external drive in order to run it. Now the benefits to that is you can run a much wider belt. This is set up to make about eight pounds of boost and you can see the size of the pulley. Now this is set up for about eight pounds of boost as well. This is a much larger diameter, so you're having a nice belt wrap. So you have a lot of surface area with that. So that allows you to maintain that six rib pulley. Now with this one, you're gonna need a wide pulley, especially if you're going down in a pulley size, you're gonna need all the traction you can get. So a wider belt is a must for that, which makes sense why GM actually set it up that way. The new technology in these superchargers make these things about 76% efficient. In the olden days with like an 871 supercharger, you're lucky if you get around 50% efficiency. Um, both of these superchargers will act like a centrifugal. They will just keep making power all the way up to redline. So they're great superchargers for performance applications. Now, Super Chevy actually worked on an LSA build and they had a fully ported, modified air lid, fully tuned custom setup. And they were able to achieve 825 horsepower at the flywheel on an LSA build. Now, at those levels, you're really pushing the ragged edge. They were actually having distribution issues. The rear cylinders were running lean and hot. Don't expect those numbers. Guys will hail Mary and pull them at 700 wheel, which is close to about the 8, 825 mark. But, you know, I would say 600 to 650, you're probably pretty much safe. That's pretty much your general use for this type of supercharger. Um, on the right hand side this is a tvs 2300 now these were similar to what was found on the ls9 corvettes on the c6 models zr1s now these are a 2.3 liter also have a 9 to 1 compression ratio in their configuration making 638 horsepower now this is edelbrock's version of that they have the same rotor pack that's in there but they have their intercooler bricks actually made into the manifold you notice the water lines running into the actual base versus no water lines running into this LSA. The LSA water lines run in through the top. Now, the benefit of doing that is they can make this thing super compact. So the footprint that the LSA supercharger has is actually quite large when you compare it to the larger rotor style compact version of this E-Force. So whether you're looking to put this thing in a hot rod, you may want to look into getting one of these 2300s. Now, the max power output you can probably get out of a TVS 2300. There have been known guys that have put out around 1,000 flywheel horsepower out of these, but I would say it's safe to say maybe around 900 horsepower at the flywheel would be safe on this model. So you will pick up a little bit more power with a 2300. Now, the main benefit I would say would be for the height. Now, when you're looking at these two superchargers on the bench, they look very similar until you actually place the air lid on top of this. This supercharger right here, with an air lid, everything from the base of the block all the way to the top of the air lid, you're looking at about 10.62 inches. Now, I've got something I can place on there to kind of give you guys a reference of how high it is. So I went ahead and propped up a wheel chalk on the top of this supercharger because this is pretty much going to be the final height. Now, when you compare that to the E-Force supercharger, you'll notice that it is much lower. So if you have really tight hood clearance issues, definitely the E-Force is the way to go. Now, if you're more budget friendly oriented, the LSAs can be picked up for pretty cheap and you can come up with a total package. However, if you're gonna be buying these things brand new, you expect to pay somewhere around 6,500 for the LSA setup supercharger alone, or about, $5,900 for the E-Force supercharger alone. These can actually be purchased in kits. So, you know, that may 
be more beneficial to you, then you're probably looking about $7,500. So here's the superchargers from the side view. You'll notice that the LSA tends to stick out a little bit further on the backhand side, and you can kind of see the difference in depth. If you've got the room, definitely this will work, but if you're really tight up against the firewall like you are with like a C5 vet, the E-Force is definitely the way to go. There's definitely just more room. Now, if you were to take the lid off of this E-Force supercharger, you'll notice that this top lid is nothing but a piece of metal. There's no intercoolers built into it like you would on the LSA. With the LSA, you have an intercooler brick that sits right here, and then you have the lid, which sits about three and a half inches tall on top of that. So if we go around to the back of the superchargers, you'll also notice that the E-Force does have a large lump out the side in the back here. That may or may not cause interference issues. However, the overall footprint of this supercharger is a lot less severe as this LSA. Both of these superchargers are pretty much maintenance free. Um, I think Edelbrock recommends you change the oil in this thing at 100,000 miles. Very similar with the LSAs. You pretty much can install them and not have to worry about them. The one thing I don't like about centrifugal superchargers is you have to change the oil every 6,000 miles in it. Now that normally wouldn't be a problem if you have a remote drain however if you don't have a remote drain you're going to be making a mess and you actually have to use a ton of brake cleaning in order to clean the mess up also with the centrifugal blowers you're going to be blocking off the access to the water pump and all the front accessories so making maintenance kind of a pain with this sort of setup water pumps and all that stuff is basically the stock labor time maintenance so that's why i like them they're very quiet they're super efficient and they make great power you know they make centrifugal like power so i basically just wanted to go through and compare the two different superchargers with you guys and let you guys see what the differences were so if you like the video definitely leave a like and if you're new don't forget to subscribe and definitely stay tuned we're doing an e-force supercharger install on a c5 corvette and i've actually set this supercharger down and we're going to try to run this with the factory hood if not we'll get an aftermarket hood but we'll see what we can do so i'm still waiting on some parts from edelbrock to arrive so we will get back on that. That's going to pretty much wrap it up for today, guys. I guess I will catch you guys on the next one. All right. See ya.